Hello everyone, and uh, Mason the Brock Henderson, I have some time on my hands, and by that of course I mean that Netflix has stopped working because our internet is slow, so I thought to myself, hey, what the heck, I'll go ahead and record another video. Yeah. So, this is going to be The Walking Dead, which is very, very close second favorite show. Uh, only first two Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And one of the great things about this show that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, doesn't have to deal with is the fact that it's its own thing. Whereas Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets to play off a bit of the Marvel Universe. You've, got, you've already got the movies, which are great. And they get to play off of that a little bit. And they tie in together. And that makes it... That's what makes it so good. Whereas The Walking Dead is its own little special thing. It doesn't get to play off of movies. It's just awesome by itself. And another thing that really kind of, I guess, ties Walking Dead close to me is the fact that it's close to me. Uh, I, I'm from Georgia. I live about an hour away from where it's shot uh, and filmed. So it's just really cool knowing that most of what we're seeing on that show was actually filmed here. In fact, there are scenes that I'm like, I've been there before. I, I've seen that, and I've been up to see Alexandra. Uh, so it's pretty cool knowing that it's all right there. So anyway, we're on season six now, and so far there have been two episodes. So I'm gonna run through those really fast, and then the third episode is tomorrow night. So fun stuff, exciting. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a. A recap some sort for this mainly because I feel like it deserves it this show really is I mean, it's really good and uh, except for maybe like a few episodes that maybe were a little slow I've really enjoyed every episode I've watched and that's not that's not something I can say about every show that I've watched or for that matter any other show that I've watched even Agents of Shields tarted it off pretty slow and took a few it took a little bit for it to get going but Walking Dead started off just fast paced just really intense and the the story itself very very clever very clever writing so anyway this season starts off with in my opinion probably one of the most clever episodes and only because I've never seen something like this done before they I've seen it done before where they have the, you're, you're here, like, what's going on? And then they do flashbacks to show what's going on in the past. But what's so cool about this is that when they do the flashbacks, it's all in black and white. And that's probably one of the really frustrating things about some shows that do the flashback is that sometimes it's hard to tell, wait, is this part of the flashback or is this present? But this, it was very clear. You're in the present, flashback, now it's black and white. And some people will say that maybe it wasn't as intense. You know, they basically, the premise of this episode is that they found this, it's almost like a, a valley of sorts, and there are thousands of walkers in there. And that in itself, I don't think people realize just how massive that is. And, I mean, really, you can feel the massive like the massiveness of it because you look and just so many walkers and even uh, just as they're leading them down the road you can see how many walkers are in there and how many are still coming it's it's the number that we've never even seen before um, I can't like I honestly can't think of an episode where we've had so many walkers in one episode so it really it wasn't fast moving and it wasn't as intense because only one character died and it wasn't even a character that we knew. My mom knew who he was from some chick flick. I, what was oh, Sweet Helen, Alabama. He, he played in that. That's the only way she knew him. But he was a character that was only in there for one episode. They brought him in for this episode just to disagree with Rick in the beginning and the flashbacks. And then he dies in this in the present time. But I'll get to that later. But just the way that they they start off showing all of this, and Rick's talking to them, and then he's like, we got to do this now. And you're like, you got to do what now? 
And so it's just, it's slowly starting to show what's going on. And I, I really find that clever. And even though it wasn't extremely fast moving or extremely intense, there were still a lot going on. And you could really feel it in, in the tone, in the emotions, all of that stuff. So basically, like I said, they found this huge herd of walkers, thousands of them in a ditch, and they were only cut off by these uh, semi-trucks that were put together. And they could tell that, you know, this wouldn't hold them for long. One of the semi-trucks looked like they were about to fall off a ledge, which would open up. Uh, there was another set of semis that, you know, the walkers could easily get through after a little while, so they knew they had to lead the walkers elsewhere, or else they would head towards Alexandria, and <laughs> you couldn't deal with that many walkers. And that's, I mean, it's the main reason, that this is kind of how they figured out, this is the main reason why Alexandria held for so long, was because at the beginning of all of this stuff, somebody set this up somehow. I don't know how, I don't know who, maybe they'll explain that more later, but somebody set this up to where all the walkers got trapped, and that's how Alexandria survived for so long, and that's how they were able to survive at the beginning. And that's, I think that's very interesting to kind of see, because these people have no idea what's going on. You could tell that <laughs> through the whole fifth season. So I think it's very interesting to see that, and see, okay, this is how they, they survived not knowing anything. Um, so, onward with the show, uh, they start to lead the walkers out, and they show a bit more about, uh, I guess, the people in the town. Some of them are with Rick because they've seen what he's done, they've seen that he knows how to survive, uh, they, they had that whole talk at the end of last season and a lot of Rick's group stood up and said, look, he knows what's going on. He may seem crazy at times, but it's just because he's been through a lot. And, of course, if you, if you haven't seen the show up to this point, you have no idea what's going on. So hopefully you've seen up to the fifth season, <laughs> or you'd be completely lost. Uh, because, I mean, I, I love how the show just, it just keeps the story going forward. It doesn't stop, it doesn't slow down, it just, here's the story, we're just going to keep going with it. And the fact that they've managed to keep it going this long is very, very awesome. Uh, so you see a lot of what happens in se at the end of Season 5 play into this season so far. Uh, Morgan's back now, and you can tell that he's been through a lot, and he's not exactly of the same mindset anymore, where Rick is... We have to do everything we can to survive. Morgan's a bit more not wanting to kill because human life is still, I mean, it is still precious to him. Uh, he's not, when you saw him, I think it was season two or three, when they went into town and found him, pretty sure it was three. Uh, but he was, you know, you could tell he was a little bit crazy. And now it seems like he's kind of, I don't know what life experience he's had since then. But it seems like he's a little bit more level-headed, a little bit more slow to take a life. Not not that he's you know, giving up. He's very much... A, he, he's a badass with that... He's got like a cane and he just spins it around, knocking off people's heads. Uh, so it's, he's definitely not giving up in any way. But he's just a little bit more cautious to make enemies and to kill people. Whereas Rick is just... He's so paranoid because of everybody that he's lost, um, everything that's happened with with Terminus, with uh, the the biker gang that came to kidnap him. He's he's just really lost a lot, and you can see that. Um, so man, I, I'm trying to keep track of everything that happened in episode one because. Like I said, it really didn't forward the plot a whole lot. It was a lot of backstory, but it was still, it, it still had my interest because I wanted to see what was going on with these thousands of walkers. And but a lot of it was the the flashbacks and showing everything that was going on. Uh, so basically, 
you have a few people that are saying that Rick is crazy, that he's not to be trusted. Um, the, the guy from Sweet Home Alabama, he's got this little group of people together, and he's like, we can't trust Rick, he's dangerous. And, of course, somebody overhears it, which, I mean, that, that happened last season, too, with uh, the, the reverend guy. He was talking bad about Rick and, um, what's her name? Maggie overheard him. So, you know, once again, but it was it was a little bit, you know, because Eugene heard him this time, and this time it was a little bit different because he knocks over something, they hear him, and it really seems like this guy uh, who's leading this little group is about to kill him. His name was Carter. I don't know why I forgot that. My brother's name is Carter. So anyway, uh, but Carter, he looks like he's about to kill him. Of course, Rick steps in and takes the gun away from him. Seems like he's about to kill him, and he's like, Nah, uncocks the gun, gives it to somebody else, like, I'm good. And you're like, wow, that, that was kind of you know, nice of Rick not to just shoot him right there. Because, I mean, this guy really, it felt like he deserved to die. Because, one, he was about to kill Eugene. And two, it really is a kill-or-be-killed world, and he clearly does not have what it takes. But they bring that back. And this is more clever writing in that Rick is talking to Morgan. And Morgan was kind of saying, you know, you could have killed him. And Rick's like, I know I could have, but in this world, he doesn't have what it takes. And eventually, he's going to die. You know, if not by my hand, then somehow he's going to die. And they're saying that it was like, the, the way they did it was so clever uh, he was, they were showing more of the, uh, uh, ushering the thousands of walkers away from the town down this other road. And, uh, they, they did it very cleverly. They set up these walls so that whenever they hit the wall, uh, they would like bounce off the wall and head more down the road. And they just, cause that's how walkers work. They just walk in a straight line and unless something else distracts them, they're going to follow it. And, uh, Daryl is on his motorcycle, and Sasha and, and uh, Abraham are in a car, and so they're leading the pack, and that's what the walkers are following. And Rick and a few other people are in the woods, just keeping an eye on the walkers, making sure they're not straying. And uh, Rick tells Carter to kind of head up to the front of the group and make sure that you know nothing's going on. And sure enough, he starts running up there. He's not paying attention. Walker behind a tree grabs him, bites him. And then they go to the flashback where Rick says this about eventually he's going to die, whether or not by me, he's going to die somehow. And just the, the fact that, you know, Rick knew that. And it just, it happened. You know, it just shows how smart and how much Rick has really just grown into this world and he understands this world. And, I mean, it's really, he has a really good character arc um, from the very beginning until now. He's just he's come so far. And to see that is really cool. One second. Hey, when, I hate whenever it's an email and not a text, because then I just stopped reviewing for nothing. The other interesting part about this episode is Glenn and uh, Nicholas. And, of course... End of last season, you had the epic clash where you know, Nick looked like he was about to kill Glenn, and then Glenn gets away, and it looks like Glenn's about to kill Nick. You're like, do it! He killed Noah! Do it! And of course, Glenn, he's too good-hearted, lets him live. But it does come with a caveat in that Nick is not trusted anymore. Like, Glenn is pretty much keeping a very watchful eye over him and saying, look, you're not ready for this. You're not going to be out in the field, but you do your you do your job. You know you do everything you're supposed to do. You can earn you can earn my trust back. But what you've done, you have to live with it. And I like that because it shows maturity on Glenn's part, um, which hasn't always been there. So, sorry, that that was weird. So, that's that's pretty much all for that episode. It ends with they they've 
you know, Glenn and Nick had to go clear out this one place. They've done it. They meet a couple other characters who I don't know their names. One, one's a, a black guy with dreads and glasses. He looks like, kind of like another Eugene, but um, he he's not like the nerdy type. But Eugene does make a comment about his hair because he's got the same long hair too. Um, but I, I don't really know much about this guy yet. Hopefully, they explain more a bit of you know, a bit about him. If not, then. He may die soon, I don't know. Uh, but then there were two other people that were with them. Maybe one of those, maybe Carter was one of those two, and that's why he wasn't in last season. Maybe. I, I don't I don't know for sure. Um, but it ends with, you know, they've managed to get the walkers heading towards, you know, heading away from town. And Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham are just leading the pack. Oh, Sasha, Sasha and Abraham kind of had this little weird... Like, Sasha, you, you can't really tell what she's going through, but it seems like Abraham is convinced that she wants to die, and that's why she's volunteered for this. But, eh, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, it was still a little bit confusing as far as that. But anyway, so they've ended, almost ended with that, and then all of a sudden you hear this loud horn going on, and they realize it's coming from Alexandria. And that's where that episode ends with just... The way it ends, just really, really, you, you waiting for next week so impatiently. Um, because, I mean, literally, it ends on the horn. Like, you just hear the horn, you see the walkers start heading away from the pack, and you see the realization on the face, it's coming from home. And it just fades to black, and the horn's still going. And it cuts off. And it's just like, Arr, you really, you guys know how to get my attention, and then you cut it off right there it's such a tease but anyway second episode happens and where the first episode lacked this intensity and this fast pace a lot of action a lot of death the second episode just said it's okay guys you were patient through the first episode second episode we got you uh so the wolves from last season, which I only thought there were two, turns out there are many, many more wolves. Um, they attack the town. And still not sure how they got in. Uh, you do know for sure how they found out about the town, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But they start attacking, and it just happens out of nowhere. Like, Carol has put this uh, dessert thing in the oven, and she set the timer for 45 minutes. She looks out the window. There's Mrs. Niedermeyer just smoking a cigarette. And like, oh, this is. And all of a sudden, wolves out of nowhere slices her, you know, slices her shoulder, and cuts her head open. And just like, what just happened? And so what happens next is just this. It's a massive attack on the town. All the wolves are just coming at the town. They're, you know, killing. Luckily, no main characters besides Mrs. Niedermeyer, which. Honestly, I didn't even know her name until I saw I heard it later. I'm like, oh, Mrs. Niedermeyer. Who is she again? <laughs> um, but anyway, the great thing about this episode is watching Carol just totally take down so many wolves. And man, if she is not my favorite character, I don't know who is. Because Rick is awesome. Daryl's awesome. Glenn is awesome, but Carol is just, she is awesome in disguise, and that makes it so much better. While, all throughout last season, you saw her just put on this, oh, I'm going to go make some cookies, and you saw her put on that act the whole season. You saw a couple times where she was clearly, like, trying to push Dar or, uh, Rick into making some hard decisions that... He didn't really want to make, but she was like, no, you have to <laughs> you have to be ready to kill these people if they're not willing to listen. Like, wow, Carol, that's kind of crazy sounding from you. But, I mean, she really was ready to go. And so as soon as the wolves attack, she, I um, can't remember, I think her first kill was like somebody had just, uh, one of the wolves had just killed a woman, and she killed the guy <laughs> with just, just a knife. She came up, killed him, um, and unfortunately, you know, the woman 
was like bleeding out, kind of freaking out, and Carol had to, you know, knife to the back of the head so she wouldn't make too much noise, um, which, you know, just re really another glimpse of Carol's willing to do anything for her safety and for the safety of the people that she cares about. And I think that's really a testament to not just how she's kept this in disguise, but also how loyal she is, because it's not just about her. She's very clearly trying to make sure everybody's okay. I think she goes and uh, she, she makes sure Carl is safe and Judith is safe, which is nice. Um, you get to see her not just being a badass, but also she's taking care of the people she loves, which is great. Um, but anyway, she disguises herself as a wolf and starts taking them down secretly. Just She goes and gets a gun. She starts killing people. It's awesome. Just watching Carol just kill people. <laughs> I, I could watch a whole episode on that. And I know that sounds weird. But it's just so much fun. Because she seems so non-threatening. And then whenever she gets her moment, it's like, okay, she can do it. Um... But this was mainly just about protecting the town from the wolves. Uh, you get to see the horn. They somehow set up a, a truck to run into the the burned down um, what's it, the burned down church, I guess. Uh, but they set it up to run that way. There was a walker inside. He hit the the horn on the on the truck, and that's what the horn was from. Um, Mid I really do want to know how they set all that up because that was pretty clever, and I don't I don't know how exactly they managed to set to set all that up. It's weird, but um, besides Carol, you know, kicking some butt, you had Morgan come back, and once again you're seeing more and more that he's very cautious about killing people. Like, you know, he's taking people down, but he's just taking them down. He's not killing them. Uh, in fact, there's a couple times where he's fighting this guy, and Carol will come up and just shoot him in the head. And he's like, I had them. And she's like, I got the job done. So you can see where Rick's group and Morgan are very much clashing. And they kind of leave that on an open note, but we'll get to that later, too. I always say I'll get to that later, and then sometimes I think back, and I'm like, I never touched on that again, did I? So I'm trying to make sure that I actually do get to everything that I'm saying that I'll get to later. So right now I just have how the wolves found the place, and what happens with Morgan. So I'll keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, more of you know seeing Morgan just show that he can get the job done without killing, and then Carol getting the job done with killing. Uh, get to see a nice moment with Eugene and... Oh, I can't remember her name. The the nurse that they had for this episode. I, I don't even want to try to guess because I feel like I'll get it wrong. But there's this new nurse that has to take over because Pete obviously can't do the job anymore. Because he's dead. But you get to, uh, you get to see her kind of have to say, I'm the one that has to do it. And then one girl gets stabbed. Uh, by the wolves, and so Tara and Eugene carry her all the way there, and now this nurse has to get the job done. She has, I think she said she got fired because she had panic attacks, and so you're a little bit worried about, is she going to be able to do it? Is she not going to be able to do it? What's going to happen? What is going on? And so she's hesitant to do it at first. She's like, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I can do this. I really don't think. And then Eugene just has this nice moment where you, just, you don't want to be a coward. And that really speaks to his character because he knows he's a coward, but he, at the same time, he's not afraid to admit it. And it's, it's such a dichotomy if you think about it. Like, you've got this guy who's a coward, but he accepts it with just almost bravery. He's like, yeah, I'm a coward. I, I'll do my best, you know, I'm just, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I've got smarts, but I've got no ability to kill walkers, 
and you know he he has has had his moments where he stepped up and those have been nice moments but this really just this, that line really speaks to his character just you don't want to be a coward like me and let me just backtrack to the beginning of the episode before all of this craziness happened probably one of the funniest lines from Eugene that he has several funny lines because he's just so he, I mean he just speaks his mind half the time but the nurse is talking to uh, Tara because she's still got the she's still recovering from the head injury from last season and so she's looking for pills and the, the uh, nurse is like so you just got a headache? I think those are symptoms that I can deal with. I don't think I'll kill you for, for that. And he says, well, unless you miss a hematoma in the head. And that's just, it just, it cracks me. Just the way he says it so matter of fact, well, you could miss a hematoma. It's just like, she she could, but did, did you have to say it? I, I don't know. It's just, he says everything just so matter of factly that it's it's funny to me. That's and that's weird to be my favorite line, but it is my favorite line so far this season. So anyway, getting back to points that I'll cover now. Um, Aaron comes out of the house, or no, Aaron comes to help out a bit, and he's able to take down a couple of the wolves. But you know, everybody starts to work together. Um, like I said, no major character deaths this this episode, so that was. It's very interesting to see because a lot of people did die, but they were mainly Alexandria people that you didn't really know who they were. <laughs> you were just like, oh no, not not that guy. Um, so, but anyway, Aaron comes out to help and he finds one of the wolves has his bag that has the pictures of Alexandria in it. So basically he just gave them a blueprint. And of course it's not his fault. Uh, he and Daryl ended up trapped in a car with surrounded by walkers, and there's not a whole lot he could do about that. But you can just see on his face, like, the realization of, crap, this is my fault. Um, so I wonder how much that's going to play in later. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to miss, uh... No, I'm forgetting her name, too. Carl's kind of not really maybe a girlfriend. Uh... She, she was touched on a lot more in this episode at the very beginning. Uh, the the little intro scene that they show sometimes before they hit the the epic violin music. Um, it, they touched a, uh, on her backstory of how she got to Alexandria, and man, was it just. I mean, I couldn't imagine. She was with her parents, and she had to watch as her parents were killed. At least I think they kind of cut to she was in the car with her parents and her parents were dead being eaten by walkers and she was just inside the car. And she really has been through a lot. Um, she had to survive. She at one point she killed a turtle to eat it. Man, that was that was sad. I was like, don't kill the turtle, and she killed the turtle. And I was like, you killed the turtle. Like just why? Um, but you you get to see her just kind of making it somehow and in fact she starts like she starts drawing three letters through just you know in, in the blood on the car and she spells it out with the bones of the turtle JSS and that's all it is is what is that they tie it in she uh, she and Carl were hanging out a bit and uh, she and Ron were hanging out a bit and Ron it, Ron is Pete's son he just can't stand him right now. Uh, really, just he's telling his mom that Rick can't be trusted. Uh, he, you can just tell he has no idea what he's talking about, and he has no idea how to survive, and he doesn't want to learn how to survive. And that's the main thing. If you don't want to learn how to survive, you're not going to. And that's that's it. Some of these people that want to learn how to survive, they might make it because they'll they'll be taught. You know, they'll learn their lesson. But, he clearly does not want to learn. Um, but Ron and the girl, you know, they have a little moment where they're sitting and talking, and Carl sees, and he's just kind of like, like, you, you can tell they're kind of doing like a little love triangle, which 
is not needed. Um, but you see her, when the wolves start attacking, you see her come to Carl's house. She's got keys to all the houses, which is interesting. Um, but she and Carl just sitting it out, waiting, you know, ready to kill anybody that dares come inside the house. And uh, Carl ends up saving Ron's life. And instead of going inside the house with Carl and the girl, Ron's like, no. And just walks off because he's jealous. So he'll die, most likely. Um, but anyway, at the very end of the episode, what's her face leaves. And, you know, Carl, she, she leaves without telling Carl goodbye, which kind of speaks to her character in that she doesn't like goodbyes, I don't think. Uh, you can tell she's kind of a little bit messed up, but, you know, kind of kind of in the way that Rick and his group are messed up, that she's just been through a lot, and it's hard on her. But she leaves this little note that says, just survive somehow, JSS. And it's like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> so... Tying it all together very nicely, in my opinion. So that's her story. Uh, Ron's mom, Pete's ex-wife now that he's dead. Uh, the girl that Rick was hitting on, I guess. She has kind of a nice moment where uh, she, she and Ron are having an argument because Ron doesn't trust Rick, thinks he's too dangerous, even though he clearly knows how to survive. But anyway... I can't blame the kid too much. Rick did kill his dad, so... But then again, her, his dad was a murderer. Pros and cons, people. I, I just, you don't know who to who, who decide with for some of this stuff. But anyway, they're having a conversation. Can Rick be trusted? The mom's like, he knows what he's doing. And he's like, Rick is dangerous. So... But that, that, kind, that scene kind of ends rather abruptly. You know, with just... He walks out, clearly upset. But the the mom does have a nice little moment, though. She has to hide with her younger son, the one that Carol keeps scaring the crap out of, threatening to leave him to the walkers, which is just so funny to watch. Um, but she has to hide him in the closet, and you know she she hides in there with him, and the wolves that came in leaves. And for some reason, she goes downstairs. I was like, wait, what? Why? Why? Just stay. But no. She decides, I can do this. And goes and heads downstairs. Um, and then one of the wolves attacks her. It's another woman. Wolf. I guess they have men now. Women. Couldn't really tell who was who. Um, but they start fighting a bit. And then she eventually takes this pair of uh, the, the hair cutting scissors and just stabs the crap out of the wolf woman and you know gets covered in blood and they said it best if you haven't watched the talking dead after the show do watch it it's hysterical for the most part uh they they just last week they had paul bettany who does jarvis's voice for iron man and vision obviously in the new avengers movie uh but they had him there and they had another guy that was on another show but they were just, they talk about the show, they talk about this episode, they have polls, they have questions. It's a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> but I can't, I think it was not Paul Bettany, but the other guy said, you know what would have been great if she, after she stabbed the woman, she just turned and looked at Ron and said, you want a haircut now with the bloody scissors? <laughs> it just, I thought that was hysterical. I, that would have been, that would have been really, really funny, but it wouldn't have fit with the tone of the show at all. <laughs> um... But yeah, that that would have been funny to me. Um, so anyway, that that's where that story ends. Ron does see her kill the woman and kind of like just stares at her like <gasps> like he's scared or something. Like, dude, you gotta survive. These people are killing other people. Um, so that's it for that story. And then finally, the Morgan story. After coming in trying to you know end things peacefully um, and seeing Carol just kill people after person, after person, um, <laughs> they, they, he and Carol are kind of walking through town after they had met up at first, and the reverend is getting attacked by one of the wolves, and Carol's ready to leave him, which I frankly don't blame her. Guy's a total just coward, and doesn't even own up to the fact that he's a coward, 
he kind of tells Carl at the beginning, I want to learn. I'm just like, dude, come on. <laughs> like, they, they helped you in season five, and then you sold them out. And then they helped you again through season five after they left the the church that he was staying in. They helped you again. You still sold them out to Deanna at the end of season five. And then you still you still want to please please help me. I'm like, dude, either grow a backbone or just leave. Cause he I mean he even tried to get himself killed last season. He couldn't even do that. He didn't have enough backbone to get himself killed. In a world where killing happens every day. <sighs> I don't like his character. I'm sorry. He's he's my least favorite character in the whole whole show. And that's saying something because Rick's ex-wife was really annoying. But he's just... I'm so fed up with his character. I wish his character would die. And I know that's mean to say, but I said it. Deal with it. So anyway... Um, but Carol's ready to leave him. Morgan obviously goes, saves him, uh, doesn't kill the guy that's attacking him. Instead, just, like, uh, handcuffs his hands with something. And this is very interesting because the guy started saying something about how they didn't belong. And it, it really speaks to the fact that the wolves are probably a cult that believe that insanity is the world now and that sane people don't belong. And anybody who is sane needs to be killed. And anybody who's insane can join the group. So I, I'm interested to see where they take the wolves. And you know, if they show a bit more of their backstory. How they got started. Who the leaders are. The leader's backstory. But then as the guy is saying all this stuff. Of course Carol comes around the corner. Shoots him in the head. Now I can't talk anymore. So, uh, But then Morgan goes on and encounters the leader of the group. Who he encountered in the woods. Um... I think in at the end of season five, uh, but they, he and one of the other wolves had attacked Morgan, and Morgan just you know deflected them, didn't kill them, just deflected them until they <laughs> stopped attacking. Uh, but he encounters kind of their leader and says, you know, you guys need to leave now because these people have guns and they will kill you. And once again, speaking very much to Morgan's human. Uh, humanity and his human side really wants to see other humans not be killed even if they are insane like these wolves which I, I don't know where they're taking that but it makes me a little bit worried for <laughs> Rick and Morgan's uh, friendship and it, how how they're going to continue on but eventually you know, after trying to attack him a couple times and Morgan just whoosh, 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 takes him down uh, they do leave and then finally the episode ends with, for one, Carl is inside the house still. He's just gotten that note from uh, Edith. No, yes, maybe. Still can't remember. His kind of girlfriend. He's just read that note, just survived somehow, and then the timer goes off. It's Carol's dessert. It lasted 45 minutes. Uh, the whole attack on the town, which, once, I mean, he just takes it out, and you're just like, they tied that all together. That's that's crazy how they did that so well. So anyway, um, but then Morgan's inside of a house. He sees that there's a door open, and he starts, you know, he goes inside. He's checking for anybody. You see somebody around the corner, and it's the it's the other guy that attacked Morgan with the leader in, in the forest. And so Morgan, you know, they fight for a little bit. And the guy just keeps coming at him, and Morgan's like, I don't want to hurt you, and keeps keeps coming at him, keeps coming at him. And eventually, I, I'm still unclear on what exactly happened, but Morgan says, I'm sorry. Takes a stick and whoosh, whoosh. And so I don't know if he killed him, I don't know if he, like, knocked him out. It seemed like he, the way he said I'm sorry makes it sound like I have to kill you because you won't stop. And so that's that's kind of how it felt, but at the same time, like, I feel like they would have shown if he killed him. So I don't know exactly what happened. Still a little bit, and that's that's not where it ends with the, the vagueness either. Because after he does that, it shows him with his cane and with his, with like a little lunchy bag looking thing. And it just sees him, it shows him walking out and then he passes Carol. And he's still walking, and you're like, what, is he leaving? Like, what? What? What's going on? 
So they're leaving a lot of room open just to take it wherever they want to go, which is very nice. Uh, because you don't have to explain everything this episode. It's the second episode of the season. You don't have to. You can leave some stuff a mystery. But I would like, to, you know, it gets me asking more questions. What's happening next? Well, what, what's happening with Morgan? Did he kill that guy? Is he leaving? What's going on? You know, what's that look he shared with Carol? Like, so, you know, that's just, that, that was pretty much episode two. Just a lot of intensity. I realized that I've talked for a long time, but man, there was a lot to talk about. As I'm talking, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta talk about that too. Oh yeah, I almost forgot that. This this show does so well in just like like I've said with uh with the blacklist. It does so well with giving us all this information, giving us a good amount of information, but it doesn't feel rushed, it doesn't feel like it's too much, it just it's there. There you go. Here's all this information. Here's this storyline. Here's this storyline. Here's this storyline. We're going to cut back and forth a bit. And it's perfectly fine. You have no problem with it. It's, it doesn't feel like... Wait, what just happened? That was that was a little too rushed. Uh, it, it really... They do a good job with just pacing it very, very well. And... I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm excited for this season. I really wasn't sure where they were taking it, but now I'm really excited. Um... Uh, but basically, from from here it looks like it's going to be what happens now. You know, the walker. Some of the walkers are heading towards Alexandria, so they got to deal with that. You know, it's it's, it's going to be good. And I can already feel it. So, yeah, I think that's it for episodes one and two, and I'll see you guys when episode three happens. So, peace out.